Hey everybody, welcome to the February episode of the Disc Only Podcast. Welcome to the Disc Only Podcast. The podcast is made twice as powerful today because this is the month of the Runaway Guys Coliseum as well. It's originating form and location. I'm your main host, Proton John, and for this Valentine's Day, I'm getting my sweetheart what she really wants, sleep. I'm Tom Fox, and for this Valentine's Day, I'm going to stuff my face full of chocolate. Oh, man. I think... Ah, jeez. I think we're going to celebrate Valentine's Day on Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, so that's that's probably what's happening for us, too. It's either that Sunday or, like, originally we were going to, go like, do stuff on Thursday, and then it's just like, eh, Thursday's looking busy. Maybe we pick another day. You're going to oh. be distracted the entire time by your bet with Alex. Also, also who that, are you? Good point. Oh, oh I'm Steven. Sorry. No, I thought, it, <laughs> I thought he was Super Bowl Sunday. I thought that's what his name was. Super Bowl Steven. Super Bowl Stephen George. That's what they used to call me when I was in it. <laughs> in in the Super Bowl. In the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. When I was in when I was competing. And I'm Jared and I am definitely feeling the love. That is for sure. Of the love. Man, the I got love. I got a problem. Yeah. How how am I supposed to watch the Super Bowl? When I'm going to clearly be watching The Lord of the Rings Return of the King. <laughs> All right, I want some details. Why is this the clash we currently have happening? Okay, so here's the deal. Every year, do a Super Bowl bet with my buddy Alex. We've been doing it for like approximately 100 years. And I have been watching The Lord of the Rings trilogy for the past two Sundays. And I'm 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 getting into it. I'm like, all right, cool, all right, yeah. I, you know, the little little Hobbit, he doing a travel, and I'm into it. Now, the finale is Sunday, and I want to watch the Hobbit get to the mountain. And how am I supposed to do that when I'm trying to watch some football players get the pigskin to the end zone? I I can't do both. All right. Well, here's here's an important question that dictates this. Are you watching? The original cut or the director's cut? The extended edition. Then, yeah, you're in trouble. <laughs> Steven, it is. Let me let me tell you about the glories of a little piece of technology called the Xbox One. Now, back when it was first announced, it was uh, it was designed to be like the ultimate all-in-one game station where you could plug your TV into it as well, like your cable box, and then you could say Xbox Snap, and then you'll have the 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 thing like be on one side and the other thing be on the other side so you could do the thing while you do the thing are you describing to me the picture in picture button that we had like in the 90s yes but it's on xbox I, now I, yeah i am describing that but they made it a lot more convoluted for xbox <laughs> and then they removed it in the current okay. xbox so they were like okay people didn't want this well, <laughs> Thanks, but i know i know i know though that steven george has an xbox one ooh i I do have an Xbox One. Um, I also have like multiple He didn't sound devices. very thrilled about remembering he had an Xbox One. <laughs> Crap, where did this come from? <laughs> oh uh, no, Microsoft. <laughs> um, I do have an Xbox One. Uh, it is it the Xbox One takes coaxial, right? Is that what it does? No, it goes from your cable box the cable box that takes Quaxel, and then it goes into an HDMI in port on your Xbox. Oh, wild. Yeah, <laughs> you, this is back when they were pushing the whole, like, TV and and Xbox gaming at the same time. Before, the, uh, back when Don Matrick was uh, managing them. So you can just plug any HDMI in yeah. into the Xbox? Yep. The Xbox One, yeah. That's wild. So if you want to play PlayStation on your Xbox One, or at least while have both running at the same time, you can do that. Yep. And you can, and like, you... do split screen? Like... Yep. I think it is. Oh, that's... Is it 50-50? I thought it was still the picture-in-picture mode where it's just, like, I... this bottom right corner for one and the rest is the other. I haven't used it in so long. The only reason I remember it is because a long time ago there were uh, Call of Duty prank videos when, uh, when the Xbox One first came out where people had their 
gamer tags as things like Xbox Turn Off and Xbox Snap. Oh yeah, no, those were great. Those were great. Those are like the the people who get you to say, "Hey, insert a lady who works for Amazon here." Yep. Uh, like on stream through uh through a <laughs> through a message or something. Or hey, search engine conglomerate. <laughs> Oh, okay, Yahoo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. All right, Bing. Let's go. God, that's that just feels weird, doesn't it? Like, like doing that, but with a different freaking search engine name. Okay, yeah, ask a Jeeves. A corporation <laughs> web is crawler. So let's go. A, a corporation is so powerful that they locked out a fairly common women's name from the world. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah. That's I mean, that's silly. It's, it's actually true. Dude, okay. and it's not locked also, out. It just means weird... now they have troll potential. Well, like, what a weird decision, too, right? Because you could have went with like another word. Like, yeah, Google. I mean, went you can with still Google. change it. Apple, ha- Apple came up with a name that like I've never heard anybody have before, which I think is pretty safe. Amazon was like, you know what? I'm naming this after. Uh, I'm naming this after after uh, my the, mom. Yeah, my my mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude i want to rename it to something where it's like <laughs> hey motherfucker <laughs> something like that i'm gonna scream that throughout the house <laughs> well, i'm just i just think of like jesse pinkman just laying on the couch going hey bitch and then it responds <laughs> i mean i bet you i bet you people have done that 100 percent. oh absolutely you Ugh. you really do not know how much joy there is available to you in life until you have asked CarPlay to send a text that is just a string of like 100 profane things <laughs> and have Siri read it back to you while you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I told, I had, I had met up with the Thomas a few months ago with and I had Thomas. told him, I told him, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to send you a text. And he said, okay. And I sent him this, this, this wild, explicit, profane-laden thing from the car. Because once you say it, Siri reads it back to you. <laughs> and I was just laughing so hard. And then Thomas texted me back this huge string of profanity. So then Siri read it. And it was just, it's very funny. It's the most juvenile comedy. But gosh, it's, it's very funny to hear the robot say the words. Well, now, so, Stephen, I have to ask you then. Considering, I know that you're, uh, based on the vlogs, I know your parents have an Alexa. Have you played Skyrim Very Special Edition? I haven't. Oh, I should, because you can do it on any of them, right? I think uh, I think so. I think it was made for Alexa. Okay. I I haven't I haven't tried that, but I, I totally should. So, My parents um... get a lot of use out of that. That was actually, that was a gift from Emil. And my parents love that thing. I honestly got to think that's probably one of the best gifts they ever received. And they use it every day. But but going back to the name thing, my mom has someone that she talks to actually quite frequently that has that name. And, you know, she'll be like, oh, you know, so the, you know, so-and-so is calling. And then the robot wakes up. It's like, what do you need? What is that? <laughs> what can I do? For, do you need the lights on? You was want me to set a timer? Was it? Was it Keegan Michael Key or Jordan Peele that was on the ad for a very special edition? Uh, Keegan. Uh, that was Keegan. Keegan. Okay, because because <clears throat> I just I just remember like him sitting on the couch when like he's being attacked by the troll and he's like, "I eat the cheese! I eat the cheese! I eat all the cheese!" <laughs> yeah, I. <sighs> I've been maybe I'll, we I've been stepping over oh, I'm stepping over Stephen now, but I've been stepping over Jared for a long time. Who I think has been trying to get a word in edgewise here. What are we trying? To oh say, no, Jared? it's all good. Uh. I was wondering if the uh, Siri reading off the text messages thing is kind of newish because um, I had like old AirPods, which lasted me for, and I'm not even kidding, seven years. Um, and I just got a brand new pair because I lo- <laughs> all the hearing in the right one went and then uh, slowly but surely all the hearing in the left one went because I only wore like one at a time. But now whenever I get a text message, if I'm listening to something, Siri will start saying it. Is that a new thing, or is it only with, like, newer tech? I, I mean, feel like it's Siri, always had that. Yeah? It, 
it may depend heavily on context too. Okay. Like, like depending on what you're doing and what you're asking and what devices you're utilizing, it may change. Yeah, because like I got, I was, <laughs> I was riding uh, down the road and I was listening to a YouTube video, and out of nowhere, like the v- the YouTube video goes lower in volume, and then Siri goes, "Thanks, brother, sent by Homic," and it scared the frick out of me while I was driving, because <laughs> I I had I had texted Homic right before I started driving uh, that I was driving, and it, it, he responded, and it just it scared the freak out of me. I was not expecting it, but I yeah. Don't know the, if- Sorry, I, had those, I had those uh, those old AirPods for a, a, <laughs> for an age, man. I was gonna say, did you get them when they launched? Because I was like, there's no way they are, the AirPods are seven uh, seven year old technology. And then I looked it up, and it's like, oh, came out December of 2016. Yep, yep we're reaching it. Uh huh. Yeah, it, it was right around then. Um, I got them right whenever they came out because I I updated or upgraded my uh, phone at that time. And I love the AirPods. Like the original AirPods were great. I'm just glad that they made like a version two of them, which are the exact same size. Cause I thought that they upgraded them and put little nubs on them. Right. But apparently you can get like the original ones as well. And like, I just upgraded after seven years and man, let me tell you what, seven years makes a lot of difference in sound quality, man. Holy going, uh, frick. Are you going nubless? Uh, yeah, I went nubless, dude. I don't, okay. I don't like, I don't like the nubs. They you don't, don't like fit nubs? my ears. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> nubs, like I gotta go nubless. I'm anti nub. <laughs> I mean, like there, there were like some. I don't know if I called them predecessors, but like I remember before they had like a. I, they probably didn't even have like wireless versions of these, but I remember like the ones that would like clip on over your ear. Yeah. Uh, well, I actually used to use like a Motorola ear earpiece like uh what, what what were they called back in the day before back in the day i sound like i'm 100 <laughs> um it was like it was just a bluetooth headset right like i had a little yeah. one that like flipped down and everything and then i got my airpods and my freaking world was open because like yo it's just an earbud that works as a bluetooth headset and it is like the best thing ever uh and now they've just they've upgraded it so much, and I'm I'm like I, I'm I'm not that much of a shill for Apple. Like I don't really care too much. Like I'm not gonna be like, oh, you gotta buy this best thing ever, I'm, uh, iPod 13. <laughs> you know, I, I don't really care about all that and having the newest thing. But they put out some pretty good products. Like who would do that? I say as I stare at my phone I just bought a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I I went into an Apple store recently um, while I was on vacation, and man. It is so tempting to just upgrade while you're in one of those stores. It's so ridiculous. They make uh, it look so nice. What was it? Like, I, yeah, my I think my phone is currently the oldest model of phone that still runs the newest iOS, at least at least before I upgraded. So I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, I need to I need to upgrade here. <laughs> and like and some of the oh my god, some of the features on this thing are like are like alien technology to me. Like the Dude, yeah. Like the, starting off with the with the face ID and the lack of button like, like the you know, like the little button that, like, I guess, in like older ones, you just push it, it would open Dude. the thing, or like a newer ones, you uh, push it, it would read your thumbprint. No I button on it. it, and it's terrifying. I miss the home button, bro. I wish, I wish that they still had that because sometimes I don't want to like get out of bed and freaking lift my head over the thing in order for it to get my face. I just want to press a button and open it while it's over there. You know, I know I can pick it up and like point it towards me, but. I have a pop socket and a pop socket connector on my desk so that blue doesn't knock my phone off. Uh, <laughs> so I slide that sucker in there every night and it works perfectly. When, um, oh man, lost my train of thought here. Oh, so like I've, uh, some of my VTuber friends have like told me that like they use, um, like the iPhone for VTube studio because the face tracking is significantly better than on like a webcam. Mm-hmm. I open that thing up and it's like, it's like it, it's first off, it's really good. Second, the way it shows you how it's tracking your face is really creepy because it puts like a silvery mask over your face, and it's it's like the weirdest thing ever. But it works great. I haven't I haven't even taken a look at that quite yet. I'm I'm looking forward to getting that set up soon. The technology in the phones is really spectacular. It's um, it's actually ridiculous. I had a. 6s plus um i got a 6s plus when it came out and then i held on to it for however many years five years and i got a 12 pro max last year and the advances that have been made 
in the video side is just really incredible. Like, yeah, man, man. Like, I love it's it's like you've leapt through time. <clears throat> it really is. It's it's exciting to me because like I want video to be accessible to people, and as time marches on, and this equipment is getting just packaged into phones like more and more people can make incredible stuff and they're not limited by equipment and that's just incredible i love it so much it's I've ridiculous also been, i've been shooting um a lot of stuff on the foot like i've been sh i've probably shot the last few months worth of the vlog almost exclusively on the phone because of the convenience of it um because we have no shortage of cameras here, and I love cameras. I love equipment so much. I could talk about it forever. But it you can't, when the quality is so close already, you can't beat the convenience and the weight of just pulling a phone out of your pocket. You always have it. You can always shoot with it. It's just nutty to me, like, how much you can do with a cell phone nowadays. Like, Oh, yeah. It, it, it's... Because I, I'm when I mean, whenever we all grew up, like you were using like a flip phone from Nokia or like the brick, right? Like, or even like before that, you had the car phones and stuff. My parents had a car phone, um, which was <laughs> ridiculous to say the least. But now you can, you can just send a live feed of video of yourself to somebody else around the world. It's like what. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. I, I'm just glad that I'm not the person who has to know how to make that stuff work. I just use it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I will I will segue into this because it is related to cameras. And I talked about it this morning <laughs> on Breakfast Stream. So I recently uh, discovered pill cams. And it is, a, it is exactly what it sounds like. It is a pill. It has a camera in it. And you swallow it. And they, it takes pictures of your insides to avoid doing things like a colonoscopy. Or endoscopy, yeah. yeah. Or endoscopy. And it's, fan it's amazing. And here's the coolest part. The coolest part was when I was reading about it, I was like, first off, this is crazy science fiction. Amazing. I love this. Second thing, I was like, oh, I bet that's really expensive. No. It's actually cheaper than having a colonoscopy because... With a colonoscopy, you have to have a bunch of doctors and stuff, and they're doing stuff, and you're there. A pill cam, you just swallow a thing. That's wild to me. It's wild. Really, it, it's funny that you bring that up because freaking Erica's mom just had that procedure done with the camera. Really? Like, oh, yeah, with the so pill cam. Cool. Does Didn't the it, pill it, have a light on it? Probably. Yes. It. So the way it works is because I'm sure people are going to be like, "How do they get the pictures? That sounds gross." So you wear a belt, and the belt, it, it uh, the pill from inside transmits the data, like all the images. It takes like 50,000 pictures on its way down, and it transmits the data to the belt wirelessly. And then when you're done, you just poop it out, you flush it, you don't need the camera, and all of the data is on the, on the belt. And that's <laughs> just so cool. You don't want it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll pass on that. I posted a uh, I posted pictures of the facial tracking from on V from uh, the VTube uh, the iPhone version of VTube Studio in the uh, in the general chat. God, it is. Here, I'll pop it up for on cam for those. It, it's wondering. it's exactly as I described. It's like a silver mask. It like it like produces a silver mask over your face that like. I I had been half paying attention. Mimics. I was like, why are you posting pictures of you in the Jabberwockies? <laughs> <laughs> It, it makes you look like a like an extra from Reboot. It makes me look like an extra from iRobot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it really does. <laughs> the mouth one's incredible, by the way. The way you can see your teeth. <laughs> it's I think the best part about that is I'm still wearing my glasses for that. <laughs> Disappro Dude, that right there's a good emote. Disapproving Tom. <laughs> <laughs> some some of these some of these are way too uncanny valley. I know <laughs> it's it's very upsetting, dude. I that one. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> John is cycling through two of them where my mouth is open and closed. So I'm going like he's bop, chewing. Bop, he's bop. chewing. Bop, bop, bop. See How this right does here? the android chew? So yeah, behind the scenes of VTubing with an iPhone. <laughs> Y'all gotta y'all gotta get in here for the live recording of this so y'all can enjoy everybody who's mm -hmm. listening. 
We appreciate y'all listening, but we do got some video stuff. See, uh, <laughs> see, like, uh, like Stephen doesn't have to worry about that because his VTuber is a sock puppet. True. <laughs> Poggy's up on the shelf over there. He's just living life, doing his thing. I also like I, I, I tuned into one of your streams one time, and I was not expecting the alert with Poggy. <laughs> it was yeah, just like a chroma, like he's just chroma keyed out, pops up in the middle of the screen, massive by the way, and just says his ca his catchphrase, Poggers. That's it. Oh it was God. fun because I I had to figure out how to do that. I was like, how do I how do I make a a chroma keyed? <laughs> I thought you were trying to figure oh, out how Lord. to say poggers. That was the complicated part. Like, well, <laughs> that you was just step one. That's oh, yeah. the hardest yeah. part. I'll, I'll credit to Chaz. <laughs> it was it was fun to do. I was playing uh, Pokemon Arceus on stream today, and one of the things that uh, happens in the game is um, outbreaks, where basically there's just like swarms of, of Pokemon around like certain areas. So at one point, uh, there was an outbreak of Walrein. Now, if you don't know what Walrein is, it's a giant walrus Pokemon. And I was just thinking, like, what, like, what if, like, you just come home one day and you hear scratching in the wall and there's tusk marks on all your cereal and, and the exterminator comes over and she's like, oh, yeah, you got walruses in the wall. And you got a, a wall, you got a wall, you got a walrus, a walrus outbreak in the wall there. Wait. On all the cereal. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. Like, what? It was... Was, did you intentionally mean to say cereal? Yeah, like like you know how like rats chew the cereal boxes. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I just. I, I mean, like I get what he's be... going for. I'm I'm with Tom on this one. <laughs> I, I, I get like... it, but I, my my stupid brain was just like, did he scratch the individual Cheerios? Like, yeah. just... <laughs> <laughs> he opened the box do. very carefully. <laughs> he <laughs> like, pulled them out one at a time. Uh, Chewed a tiny bit, and then put them right back in. How the hell do you make a make a, a tusk mark on something significantly smaller than it? Well, um, how you would know, you identify I, it as a tusk mark? Tom, you gotta believe. All right. <laughs> okay, so I so I grew up in Myrtle Beach, where you know big tourists. Where the walruses were plenty. <laughs> well, there, there's always people doing like little, like little things in malls and shopping centers to get tourists to come over and be like, "Ooh, I gotta buy that." And like forever, they did the the write your name on a grain of rice thing. There was so many oh of my. those around here. Dude, that, yeah. That, that takes, uh, Stephen, that takes a lot more delicate precision than I'm pretty sure a walrus is capable of. Mm, you haven't met some of the walruses I know. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <sighs> oh my God. But I can introduce you if you're ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Ever around. Dude, those little like. It was like a rice thing. They wrote your name on rice. They put it in a little vial and then had like a topper or stopper on the top of it. So yep. it like float around, dude. Yep. Like, God, that's like, that's like freaking elementary school. Did memory. I take everyone back on a journey? A little bit. Yeah. I remember I remember it was like a big deal. Well, I mean, like this is obviously a big deal because it's it's really impressive that somebody did this. But somebody like, um like transcribed like an entire like. I don't know if it was like a religious text or what, but they tr transcribed like a really long thing on a grain of rice. Wasn't that the B movie script? <laughs> I don't think so, but the now religious I text. <laughs> no, I think someone did that as a bit there, or maybe that was just a Photoshop of the actual I, like scroll or like Genesis. I'm like most, I'm most I want to say it was the Torah. I'm most angry that I can't tell if you're joking or not. That's the worst part is like, no, it's I, not I, a, I'm, oh, I'm not. John, it's like, no, that's, that probably oh, you're talking real. about John. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not joking. <laughs> okay, well. I mean, um, I remember it being either, like, a, a chapter. I don't think it was the full... It couldn't have been, like, the full Torah. You like, good God. You, can, that, you can't do that. Not That's, even, like, no. point not, zero zero one size font. <laughs> not, even, not even Android Tom could write the entire thing on a grain of rice. Android to are you talking about is that my connection to the toaster? You you when you have that that scary face mask on and you oh. <laughs> into uncanny valley that's Android Tom. Android Tom can do things that we humans don't know about or can't even perceive. Possibly writing very small things on a grain of rice, but not the entirety of a religious text. I do not believe it. Sorry Android Tom. 
Does that does, wait, does that make me like a DBZ android? I mean, <laughs> somebody I, in chat said you look like Vision. <laughs> That's perfect. All you need is a little gem on the top of your head, and you're good to go. Rice yeah, writing. So, somebody, somebody said, uh, said Andros in chat as well. I'm just thinking, like the, uh, you know, like the polygonal Andros from the original Star Fox. This is what would oh, happen yeah. if, like, you smooth that out oh. like 18 times. I, I definitely heard polygamist Andros. <laughs> <laughs> John, what did you, what did you find about the rice writing? Rice writing actually has an entry on Wikipedia. Rice writing is the art and skill of being able to write small enough to write on a grain of rice. It, uh, grain of rice, rather. It originated in ancient Anatolia in Turkey and India. Many rituals hmm. uh, use and rites use rice as a medium, but at some point in ancient Alatonia, artisans who were skilled at making miniature paintings decided to turn their skill to making art w uh, with what had always been an ancient symbol of prosperity. The oldest example, which, which lies in the Top uh, Topaki Palace in Istanbul, Turkey. They were in, artisans would inscribe messages, messages or names on a single grain of rice after it was treated and polished. And uh, on side of that, the current world record is someone holds a record for writing 1,749 characters on a grain of rice. Dang. That's like, oh, man. Oh, characters. I thought you said I thought you meant words. Characters. Yeah. Uh, letters. <laughs> okay. I wonder what that would equal up to characters wise. Like. Like how long is that? Like a paragraph? Like one paragraph? I know. Mm, well, yeah. I, oh, actually, yeah, that could be, huh? Like, Let me see. I don't <laughs> know. Like uh, maybe the Lord's Prayer. I don't freaking. Know. <laughs> I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna pull. I'm just gonna pull up like something on a. Like, Eighteen hundred like, characters like, <laughs> is is a couple paragraphs. You're just gonna be like. Oh no! I'm just gonna type it out. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up like a, like a paragraph of something I wrote for like for for D and D and just do word ah. count on it and see and see how, how much that comes. Character to. count. Yeah. One, two, three, four. <laughs> oh, how do you do character count on this? Tools. There we go. Okay, so a paragraph on like the D and D stuff, excluding spaces, is around 500, 500 characters. Yeah. So Whoa. That's a couple Whoa. paragraphs. Dad, gone, man. That dude just got some good handwriting. Well, small, <laughs> small handwriting. I don't know. If it, it might look like chicken scratch, but you never know. I like how I look in chat and someone said, that's about seven Twitter posts. And oh, my right. God. You're right. Actually, and they're <laughs> right. I wonder what? if there's someone out there who is tweeting their tweets as images of their tweets on grains of rice. <laughs> dude, I want. Not, why? I want my most popular tweet to be inscribed on a grain of rice. Like, that's what I want. And I have no idea how to make that happen. I don't even know what my most popular tweet is. Is there a website where you can check that? Oh, other than Twitter? Don't I, I think listen. Twitter itself tells you that. <laughs> I, I think there is a, a, a thing through Twitter that can tell you that. There's probably a site that does anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I know I can look at Twitter. Um... But yeah, I was I was wondering because like I know that you can like find who like uh you know who follows you the or like who follows you the most who interacts with you the most stuff like that. Um, there's like that little wheel <laughs> or whatever that goes around during yeah, yeah. Christmas time. You, you guess my most popular tweet for a dollar. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Someone actually found a picture of the uh, the grain of rice with uh, the scripture on it. it. Looks like the Ten Commandments. There Dude, we they go. drew Jesus on. Or, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Mo, is that Jesus or Moses? I can't tell. It's too small. I assume because it looks like they're <laughs> on the commandments. That must be Moses. Yeah, yeah. that's freaking awesome. Actually, what? A Amy Lou found this. So, wow, that's incredible. Actually, I, I mean, like it's. I'll use my descriptive powers yet again. It's uh, it's exactly what it says on the right on the uh, on the on the the box there. The Ten Commandments written on two grains. It looks like two. Oh, well, it could be double sided. Um. Yeah, Ten Commandments written on a grain of rice with a with a very tiny drawing of Jesus or Moses, excuse me. I'm pretty Jesus sure it's rice. supposed to be Jesus, like, so, it, some religious figure. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like you know. Listen, generally it's, if, it's just it's some Judeo Christian religious figure. Okay, I have a, I just have a None. hard time feeling that somebody got down there on that grain of rice and was like Moses. Yep, I'll do Moses. You know, that's not, Jesus not, rice. All right, not, that's what. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Rice. <laughs> Jared, you've done it. 
<laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and it's, it's just it's just nondescript Judeo Christian man. Yeah, Dan's right. The halo doesn't mean that it's Jesus. It just means they're a holy person. So that is Moses true. Is applicable. God, you said halo, and my first thought went to the game. <laughs> God, guys. <laughs> Someone somewhere is keeping the art of grain of rice art alive. <laughs> someone. There's so, there's someone, there's some Instagram user or something that's like, they just finished their Master Chief grain, you know? <laughs> I wish I could write a letter on a grain of rice. Uh, like, just period. That'd be kind of cool, actually. Going back to digital assistants, I don't know if I'm being spied on or if my Google Home is just having uh, a uh, a fit in some way because every now and again when i'm just like it happened a lot before i unplugged the damn thing and plugged it back in but sometimes when i'd be like streaming and just like having a normal conversation wouldn't mention google at all and then all of a sudden i just hear the mic is on the mic is off the mic is on the mic is off the mic is on the mic is off and and I like hate that yeah <laughs> that's your uh <laughs> that's your guy at the nsa uh falling asleep on his keyboard <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> i mean you know I'm someone that, I guess, in some capacity, I've welcomed these devices into my home under the guise of uh, convenience and technology. But there is a limit to how much I want to be reminded of the presence of technology. Yeah. It's the same as being reminded of, like, the fact that the burger is a cow. Like, I like my burger. I don't want, like, a cow to be stationed next to my burger. That would be too, <laughs> that'd be too close. Also, where the hell am I eating? Um, but it, you know, it sounds as long like a barn some... steakhouse. <laughs> you know, an Outback Stab House. There you go. Yep. Half of our patrons are cows. <laughs> oh my god! And the other half. At, are at, listen, at, at, out, <laughs> at, at Outback Stab House, you're probably getting gutted as much as the cows are. Oh lord, our insurance bill is through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And people it, it, yeah our insurance bills to the roof and people who eat there have like very high insurance premiums not not for the stabbing but for the cholesterol i love that part of the questionnaire at Allstate where they're like now do you regularly attend the outback stab house <laughs> <laughs> and you have to say no no just you know once a year for anniversaries and they're like mm, okay but you do have to write that down sir <sighs> dude uh I had to, uh, well, we had to get a bunch of uh, documents for Erica's final um, immigration test, which is in two days, and we are very excited to get this done finally. Uh, but it was really funny because they need like very specific documents. And it's funny that you brought up uh, State Farm because I had to go and find the part of my life insurance policy that <laughs> showed that she was my beneficiary. <laughs> Uh, specifically the page where it says she's the one who gets the money if I die, it, which is very like eerie in a certain way. Cause like they were very, very specific on the form. Like they give you a bunch of different things that you need. Like you have to make sure that it shows that, uh, you know, like we're living together. Like it's not just a fake thing in order to get somebody over. So like her name on our LLC and things of that nature, but that one was very specific and kind of funny to me because I'm just sitting there like, huh, they need to know <laughs> who gets the insurance policy when I die. That's <laughs> very specific. <laughs> they wanted to make I sure mean, it goes to her. I mean, that is that is sort of the point of life insurance. Like, if you don't have anyone to leave your life insurance to, you probably shouldn't get life insurance. <laughs> you're, just, you're just paying for nothing at that point. I mean, I guess that's kind of unless I guess you could set it up to go to like a charity. I guess you yeah. could do that. Yeah. And then they I have to deal with the taxes. And then I you have wonder. to really you have to really hope that everyone involved is on the up and up when you die because there's no one watching out for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, we are just we are so ready to get um this immigration stuff done, man. Dude, the test, the test that they make you take is so funny. It, it it's like uh there, there are a hundred questions that they will ask you in total. One of the questions being, who is the president of the United States? Uh, another one being, who was the first president? Who is the father of our country? And like, it's just like super easy stuff. But ironically enough, I failed it because <laughs> I don't know. 
like certain things about this country for some reason. And I don't know why. Not the president. That one's easy. Those are the easy questions. But they also have like how many members uh, like, or how many Senate senators are there in the U.S.? Apparently there's – I think I believe there's two per state, so 100. So it's like, it's like those are really specific. But I didn't even know that, right? But she – so I could say now Erica now knows more about American culture than I do. <laughs> Well, it, I mean, like that's, for the test. that's that's really interesting. You say that though, because like it seems like that the people who are trying to get into America know more about how America works than Americans do. Yeah, it's it's just so funny. Like, because I I forgot how many members are on the House, like the House of Representatives and stuff like that. But you have to know it, and mm-hmm. it's just four, it's weird. Four thirty five. Yeah, uh, I think it's four thirty five. Yeah. Yeah, I could. Uh, I could go get that freaking test, and we can see who's really good at this right now. <laughs> Does that, how? So, how long has it been four thirty-five? Like for that, because I, doesn't it also change depending on like redistricting and whatnot? Bro, I have no freaking idea. No idea. Somehow, I don't believe that John will be able to answer this question. <laughs> what? What question? <laughs> to, to which I <laughs> questions about how the U.S. government works. <laughs> well, you got a hundred yeah. members of the Senate. Four thirty-five was the cap in the House. Someone said in the nineteen twenties there earlier. Uh, right now, possession I think is mainly in the Democratic side on both, or is it right now the Senate is split fifty-fifty with the tie with the vice presidential vote, and then yeah. the House is slightly in favor of Democrats. It is it is literally 50-50, I believe, with um with the tiebreaker with, being the vice president. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh <laughs> another question on the on the test is how many years do we elect a senator for? I'm like, I don't freaking have any idea. <laughs> I well, have no clue. It's mm, it's it's two, but they don't have a term limit, right? No, it's uh, uh for a senator, it's six. Oh, elections happen every two years. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah, like there's, it, there's the midterm election and your actual election and chat exactly. saying it's six yeah, yeah. for the for these senators. So I yeah. think I think it, it's a good indication of the fact that um, perhaps within the U.S. we've done maybe not the best job <laughs> of explaining how <laughs> what what would works. give you that idea? I just, you know, call the hunch. <laughs> the biggest I think the biggest problem is that in the U.S. there's just way too much weight put behind the president as if the president is God. It is the everything, yeah. And that's just not how it works. Either the president actually does course. not have nearly as much power as people think. Yeah. Um, you know, smaller elections are extremely important, and folks are like, I don't understand. I went out and I voted for this guy. What happened? And it's like, well, <laughs> there's a million other things that you had to do. In, in, the, uh, in the personality culture that we live in now, it makes it really easy to lump all power onto a single individual. Mm. And like, it, it's, it's all like a mental game and it, it's just, it's really funny because you know, the, I mean, checks and balances are there for a reason. The house and the representatives are there for a reason, but all we think about is like, Oh, the president did this it sucks or it's good. You know, it's like, no, it's, it's thousands upon thousands of people. Um, that are making like, you know, the laws and stuff. And it's like, it's very interesting to me. Um, the, cause I, I, I keep very quiet on Twitter and like online about like stuff like that, but it's really interesting to watch like the discourse for me mm. sometimes just to see what people, you know, say about all of it. Cause in, in modern politics, the president seems to play two roles, a figurehead and a scapegoat. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Yeah. That yeah. checks. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, like who, who are you gonna blame like, except the person at the very top? Yeah. yeah, and and like and like there's there's like other there's things that the president like does have responsibilities for. Like you know they're they're responsible for uh, like signing through bills or vetoing them. They it's, can yeah. they they can you know make executive orders. Like there's there's several responsibilities and you know things that the president can do. But in modern discourse, where a lot of the stuff that reaches the Senate and the House rarely ever passes. Yeah, <laughs> you have the president is basically just a figurehead and a scapegoat. Ironically, that is a question on the test as well. What powers do, does the president hold? Which, you know, uh, I 
Well, I got that one right. Uh, I knew about the vetoing laws. You only have to answer one of three. So <laughs> three of the answers that they give you at least. But yeah, it's like American politics and politics in general. Um, I usually stick way far away from, but it's been a very interesting time um, to like learn about this type of stuff, especially, you know, I'm, I'm getting older and like I, I watch all this craziness happening, uh, not just in America, but ar like around the world. And I'm like, man, what made that happen? You know, like what, like what transpired? And that's actually been a really interesting, both intro and extra, uh, uh, introspective on like just life in general, you know, like how do the, how does thing, how do things work? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Going back to the funny here. Uh, yeah. Apparently it's a, uh, there's a picture from nerd art and games on the screen where it's someone asking who the president is. Jared going, it's Pikachu! <laughs> Thank you oh for my your God. service, President Pikachu. It's like, uh, who's that Pokemon? Mm -hmm. But it's an old video. Where it's like, it's very clearly coughing. The guy says, it's Pikachu, comes back. It's coughing. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> what, what would be the controversies in President Pikachu's term? <laughs> uh, not being able to speak English. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh my God! Very yeah, shocking that, behavior. That, a lot of uh, <laughs> yeah, people would have a view uh, a field day with uh, with his inability to speak English. President Pikachu, there's been rumors that uh, you may be thinking about using a thunderstone. Is that true? We've heard a lot of rumors. No, Pika, Pika, uh, President, yeah, going back to those, it's like, President Pikachu, there's, there's rumors that you're using the Thunderstone. Is that true? Right, you! <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> now, if, if President Pikachu evolves into a Raichu, does there have to be another election? Because is, is, it the, is he the same, technically? I don't know. Like, how does that work? Like, like, if you, if, let's say that, like, Bruce Banner was president at the time he became the Hulk, like, wh how does that work? See, that that's just a weird question <laughs> <laughs> with no I, I mean, easy answer a weird question begets another weird wait question. so what, what was the question Trevor like what would happen if bruce banner was the president was the, the president at, at like at the time he turned to the hulk oh so if the hulk became the president is it, the Hulk still president? Because technically, the Hulk well, is not who is the president. Well, yeah. Here's the thing. Like, yeah, it basically, it would be the equivalent of whatever form became president. The other form would be the equivalent of being on like a sick leave or sabbatical. So at that point, the vice president takes over. The fair. Hulk is first lady. That is fair. That that right there is a good answer to that. Although I, I do agree it's with the not fact. a good answer because there is no good answer because the question is asinine. But I will accept your. <laughs> but response. that's the point, though. We're not talking about reality. Like we don't We're have to about worry Pokemon. about Bruce Banner running hey. for president. So so going back to that, if a Pokemon evolves, I think they still are able to hold the seat. I think they would have to undergo a psychiatric evaluation, though. <laughs> they yeah. definitely would, because they are the same. Like they are the same, like being. Okay, Just they look different. I, I I'd like to uh, posit this with uh with um uh the Pokemon anime where let's say Charmander Ash's Charmander was the president and then evolved into Charizard. You remember how Ash's Charizard was when it evolved? See that that right there makes a good point. It's like do they get like different temperaments? Temperaments are there? Is there like now this is very nerdy? Is their brain chemistry the same? Like no, it's, stuff it's like different. that. It's hundred percent different. It's, it's the equivalent of like going through puberty. Yeah, it's a it's like a very interesting little fun question. I like that. Is Unless that you go through why, like, is sorry, that why ahead. the middle the middle evolution Pokemon are always drawn so angsty? Is yeah, it because yeah, is going yeah exactly. Puberty? You got it. You figured it out. <laughs> yeah, middle middle evolution Pokemon are basically the the teen years. They're the angsty teen years. Yeah, Raboot being probably one of my favorites. Um, in that in that whole uh situation, he's got a little hoodie on. Now my question is, where the frick did he get the hoodie? It's just like Machamp at the store, with like his everyone belt. else. Well, okay. Whenever, whenever a Machoke, of, oh, I'm sorry. Whenever a um, Machop evolves, he evolves into a Machoke he who has pants on. Or er, yeah, are those pants him? Also, uh, why can Pokemon decide not to evolve? How weird is that? How weird is it that your Charmander could die an old man? 
Because the Charmander is like, you know, father, should I turn well, into Charmeleon? And you're like, no, son, stay Charmander forever. But then he doesn't ever go through puberty? Well, What's no, happening? No, 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 no. It's like, think of, th I, think of it We're, less like, 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 as they evolve, they get older, and more of it like, think of it like Frieza forms from Dragon Ball. <laughs> I got a big dumb grin on my face. I love stuff like this. But like, 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 like it's, first, it's about, like, like first for like second form Frieza, like it could be like taller than King Cold and still younger. We're also so you're also have, looking at it, Stephen, as if it's like uh, human sensibilities. Like it doesn't necessarily have to work like that. Like a Pokemon's like chemistry is completely different than ours. We're just using the closest comparison. Yeah, it's it's a bias in that situation. I mean, how different is it than ours? Well, what can you fictional? shoot electricity <laughs> out of your cheeks? <laughs> it depends on our where house, I've eaten. Our house is pretty staticky. <laughs> Can you breathe fire? No. Once again, de depends on where I've eaten. No. I, Do you I, have I, I, cannons growing out of your back? Uh, I just have no. <laughs> Can you say more words than place. just your name? Uh, it's usually. So wait, so hold on, John. Meowth what about standing? Because that's an ability he learned. But, well, in the anime, he learned it by giving up watching... other abilities. Wait, he gave up other abilities for that? Yeah, he literally can't learn payday. That's that was a whole plot thing. Like, oh, they wonder why Meowth okay. just didn't have payday and just give them money for free. And he's like, no, I I gave up learning abilities so I could speak English. Holy frick! I never knew that. Yeah, oh, it's like that's season cool. one. Yeah, the, so I saw that, so I saw they, that they, episode, but not the whole thing, apparently. Though so they've probably retconned it since then, because in... in and... And Bro, I've, I've seen... I have seen... <laughs> I have seen Pikachu talk, though. I've seen... Not, no, I'm not talking about Detective Pikachu. I'm talking about the freaking, like... Po Pokemon... One of the Pokemon movies. I think it was the second or third one. Uh, may, might have been even farther. Yeah, but, like, that was from the angle of another Pokemon translating it, wasn't it? Something like that? Like, whoever... They were, we were seeing everything from... Could understand Pokemon. Did I die? You oh. did for a minute there. Okay. <laughs> did I? Welcome die? back. Like ch <laughs> ch ch chat's like chat's like shouting like Tom's dead. Tom was silenced. What's happening? <laughs> no, you, you don't know, get you to talk about was, Pokemon. You know what really caught me off guard is um, Mal and I have been playing through Pokemon Let's Go, and this is our this is our first time playing through it. I really, I really like it, especially as someone who is very much grew up with Gen 1, and it's all the Gen 1 stuff, and you get to see the Pokemon in the 3D, and the towns are in 3D, and it's really, and Team Rocket's there. It's really cool. However, as soon as we met Meowth, and Meowth didn't speak English, I was like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it was in, in Pokemon Yellow. Yeah. I was like, why didn't he speak? He's supposed <laughs> to talk. I have a favor to ask you in that regard as well, Steven. Yeah. Keep using Mr. Mime. <laughs> you mean Glurp? Yes. <laughs> oh, Glurp. That's a I had name. a Mr. Mime in my playthrough. His name was Pagliacci, and I loved him. I mean, I'll, you called I'll it Pagliacci what, I'll the I Clown? Can. That's incredible. Yeah. I'll do what I can. I actually spelled his name wrong uh, initially, and then chat, and then the comments had to correct me. It seems Dude. like a hard thing to spell. You know what's much easier to spell? Uh, glurp. Glurp. Yeah. <laughs> glurp or glorp? Glurp. Glurp. U R P. G L U R P. Okay. Why not glorp? Listen, man, I didn't make the names. Yeah, he's he's, he's getting he's getting his nicknames from chat. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Actually, I did make that name because that's a reference to an extra life thing. Ah. Uh. But, but yes, most for the most part, I didn't. I, I can't be. I can't be blamed for these things. Although I mean, like the I think the only Pokemon that you named, you both you and Mal named initially was um, uh, your starters, right? You got Starter, Jitters and yeah. what it was? What was her name again? Mal chose Beatrice. Beatrice. Oh, that's a good reason, one. Bethel came to my mind. I don't think that's an actual name. Be Beatrice the Eevee. Yeah. I'm Turns lame. out um, <laughs> that Eevee real strong. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so. Are are you aware of like what uh of what makes um the Pikachu and Eevee starter special, aside from the moves they can learn? Um, uh, their stats are real good. Yes. Yep. 
They're, they have they have significantly better stats than normal Pikachu and Eevee. They also can't like, evolve, right? And right. they can wear a hat. They can wear the hat. Makes they can wear a hat. Yes. Because you, at some point throughout the game, you talk to this fella upstairs in a in a building, and he's like, "Let me teach you how to judge Pokemon." And I'm like, "Oh man, I don't know that I want to do that." <laughs> I don't really. I don't want to. I just want to leave them be. Like let them judge live their own them life. all. <laughs> but I learned how make to, them I atone for their sins. Them. And if you if you judge your your starter, it's like this is the best. Po this is Jesus. Wow. <laughs> like I got Jesus and Mal got Mister Rogers, and those are our Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> You're pitting. You have Pokemon battles like in each one of the. One of the streams you do. Are you saying you're pitting Jesus and Mr. Rogers against each other? Yeah, and I'm saying that uh, for the most part, Jesus needs to step it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's already been established that Mr. Rogers would win the ultimate showdown. To be oh, fair, really. Jesus did die first. He also he came back though. Yeah, and Jesus so, had a Jesus had yeah, a respawn so did Pokemon. Time. Yeah, he had a he had a freaking terrible internet connection though. It took him three days to respawn. Yep. It's a joke from Dragon Ball Z a bridge where Mr. Satan gets like clobbered by Cell and like everyone thinks he's dead. But then like he gets back up and the reporter's like, Mr. Satan, did you die? And if so, you have just beaten Jesus' respawn time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, frick. I need to I need to go back and like rewatch the movie specials from uh TFS team, team four star. Yeah. yeah, the movie dude the freaking movie specials that they did were so good Like the entire that. series is great, but yeah oh. I, I, I love their episode of Bardock one just because they they Show no shame in pointing out just how stupid it is. Yeah. Oh, man that one and Broly like oh, yeah <laughs> princess <Tra. laughs> Please no <laughs> <laughs> what, what was one of the lines they said your your hair looks like lavender, but smells like strawberries. <laughs> oh, Plan to Eradicate Christmas is really good, too. Where yep. they turn Plan to Eradicate the Super Saiyans into a Christmas special. It's so good, man. Good God. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I truthfully cannot, like, rank those videos. They're just all good. They're so good. Have you, um, have any of y'all watched uh, Helsing Ultimate Abridged as well? I'm in it. Wait. What? I'm, a, I'm an extra. I'm an extra, but I'm in it. Oh frick! Yeah, dude, I didn't know that. I, I watched that. I watched uh, all of that way before I ended up meeting you guys. So, man, that's cool. Wh what? What part? Because I remember those like the back of my hand. <laughs> um. So you know when like the dude is talking about like uh, how uh, like what was it? Is like a uh, they just they just bit his ass off or they just bit his head off like that asshole owl in the lo in the uh, lollipop commercial. The one guy goes, "How many licks did it? That was the how many licks did it take, guy?" <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. I did not know that. Holy frick! I am not in the no. I am not in the dub. I am in the abridged series. Yeah. Oh man, that's awesome. Holy frick! Everything comes full circle. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you, you, you don't even know about the people that you you spend your time with. <laughs> I know a little bit about them. I don't know what they've done. <laughs> Jared, what have what have I done? What, what have any of you us done? done? You've taken a lot of videos. That's one thing I know about you. Yeah, that's basically all you need. To know. <laughs> I guess in terms of like like more. The most recent like voice stuff that I've done is that uh, I, I was I played a couple of roles in Scott Falco's um, um, totally legit speedrun series uh, oh. for his I think it was like Pokemon Gold or Pokemon Crystal uh, speedrun. I was Mister Pokemon in that. Uh, oh okay. And there there is a <laughs> uh, the character's name is uh, several A's in a row, and this was right around the time when I did the screaming Quagsire thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> and then um and then uh I was a uh, skull kid in his uh, totally legit um Majora's Mask uh speed run. Cool. I've actually I've only done voice work for uh a friend's indie game. Um it's actually really fun. Like uh reading off lines in the way that you're supposed to. Like that's like a, like it was surprisingly fun for me. Um now I can't remember the name of the game cuz I'm an idiot. Oh, frick. Give me a sec. I gotta go look it up. <laughs> this is gonna drive me nuts. 
I uh, was it Unmetal? That wasn't the one you were going to be in, was it? Yes, uh, Unmetal was the one. Yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I completely forgot. <laughs> yeah, someone in chat makes a, makes a point as well. I also was a. Uh, I did a voice for uh, for um, Tora in uh, Emil's uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Two Let's Play because there was one one specific line that he was really hoping was voiced, but it wasn't. So he's uh. like, hey, Tom, I need a favor from you. <laughs> It's like one. It's this one part where like a guard is um is commenting on the on like a surplus of like visitors and whatnot, and uh, Torus uh, the guy's name is Marcel and Torus responds with, Ah, Torus, get it? Marcel is big racist. <laughs> yeah, I I I haven't really done a lot of voice work. It's not something I've ever really pursued. But a friend of mine uh, had reached out to me uh, like two two or three years ago and was like, Would you do some voice work for my game? I was like, Yeah, sure. And he's like, it's going to be you and Kira Buckland. <laughs> oh! And I was like, okay. <laughs> so we did a, uh, it was a like a baseball, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's like based on the movie, I, I think the name of the movie is Moneyball, and it's about baseball and like buying players and stuff. And it was just this little, it's this little indie game, but it's, it's, it's just really funny because it's Kira Buckland. Yeah, and it's it, just me. <laughs> so. It's like yeah, professional vlogger and let's player Stephen George, and voice actress of Jolene Cujo in JoJo Part Five, Kira Buckland. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was weird. I did the first twenty of it. I was like, oh, this is you know, this is fun. To be fair, like Kira, didn't she start off doing things with like Eagle Raptors Flash videos? Like, yep. Yeah, like, I remember she emailed me a long, long, long long-ass time ago for a Let's Play project I was working on back on something awful that got scrapped. She literally, like, sent in a demo reel. Or part six, yeah. Huh. Yeah, she was, uh, she was in some mild machinimas. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm way out of the voice actor loop, like, um... I don't know anybody. <laughs> I barely know anybody by name, like in the whole voice acting community. Uh, Homick is uh, doing work as a voice actor. Like he, he is a couple of parts. I just can't remember where they're at because my brain is fried right now. Um, but like he's, he's doing everything he can to get into like some bigger roles and stuff. And Holy he's shit. been busting his behind doing it too. I found, I found the email. Oh wow! Someone someone reminded me her old username was Rena Chan, and I put it into my my archives, and and I found the MP3 file from 2007. Wow! <laughs> Good lord! Fifteen ago. years ago. That email has dust on it. <laughs> <laughs> it. Has wrinkles. It's uh, what's the? It's fragmented. <laughs> yeah. You got to put that sucker through like a like a defragmented program before it works. There you go. It's like auto encrypted. I wonder if I can even download this. Still, is it still considered? It's yep. an old encryption. I've so. got it. I've got it. <laughs> wow. Amazing. That's an MP2 file. <laughs> <I'm> an MP2. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to remind chat that the internet is forever. <laughs> Amen. Good Man, is, lord. I can't believe that 2007 is 15 years ago. Isn't that weird? Uh, it's fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine with it. I'm just, you know. Uh, I mean, look at the bright side. It won't really feel like 15 years ago until June. Sure. <laughs> That's how I see it anyway. It doesn't really feel like it's that long ago until like you're halfway through the year. Because if I'm like, oh, man, that was 15 years ago, and I don't remember exactly what month it is, it's like, well, was it really 15 years? It's close, but it makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, er, 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 it's fine. You know, time marches on. I had a comment. I had a comment on a, a vlog or something the other day, and it's like, you know, I haven't, I haven't tuned in in a while. And he, he said, it's funny because I, I've watched you for a long time. And, you know, it's been a little bit, and I came back, and he's like, now you're, like, graying at the temples and having, like, medical work done. And I'm like, let it go! We're all getting old! That's how this works! We time, you shut the hell up! Time moves in one direction, my friends, I'll tell yep. you what. We, you know, every everybody that you... Because I, I, I know that there's so many folks here have been watching, like, the four of us for a long time. 
and you 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 watch us and you're like, oh man, that's awesome. They're doing this cool thing. I and I'm really into it. And you've been following maybe for ten years, and that's amazing. But like everybody getting old, we getting old too. And like we're gonna keep doing it, I'm sure. But like things are gonna change. God, our hair doing... our hair is gonna fall out, or our hair is gonna gray, or we're gonna have to get thicker glasses. I don't know. One of these things. I was in all uh, of the a, above. Nah, dude. Leather. They're gonna they're they're gonna take the the. You know, I'm gonna get corrective laser surgery and plastic surgery. They're gonna take the hair from my ass and put it on my head. <laughs> that could be a good look. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a good look. I, I just, I, I, like I, I, I don't know that I would touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you offering to even touch to his that. hair in the first place? Well, you know, it's not something that I would normally do, but you know. If Tom Bumper. was ever like, hey, would you, you know, give, I don't know, give me a scratch on the head. <laughs> like, that's a close enough, you know, that'd be a weird question, but that that's, I feel close enough to Tom that if he were to ask me a question, I'd say, you know, I, sure, bud, I, I could do that for you. But if I knew that he had had the ass hair to head surgery, I, I, I feel like there would be a slight hesitation. I'm not saying that I would not do it at all, but I would hesitate a little bit. Because oh, there would be that God. part of my brain that's like, well, you know, well, you know where that came from. Uh, <laughs> Steven, are you aware that you've probably just written a bumper? <laughs> ah, is yes, that, the is famous that, ass not, hair bumper. We're, we're, we're probably not going to go uh, explicit with that one, just to, just, just to be very clear here. <laughs> You're going to walk around. Here, here, I'll do the setup for you now. Let me, let's do the hypothetical. So you guys are at the uh, the actual building. Uh, for some reason, Tom has his entire butt wrapped up in bandages, like mummy stuff. <laughs> around his butt. And uh, Stephen oh, walks into the room and is going like, uh, "Yo, Tom, what's up?" Like, I'm like, oh, nothing. Oh, I just no, got out no, of surgery no, the other day. And we're like, "Oh, your hair looks really nice today. What'd you do with it?" Like, yeah, about that. You want to touch it? Like, well, that's weird, but yeah, sure, I'll touch it. You start patting it, <laughs> and then it zooms right in on your face, right in front of Steven's face, and you just whisper, it's my ass hair. <laughs> and then you just walk away, limping with your injured butt, and Steven's just staring at his hand and just does like the, <sighs> the weird, like, awkward breathing. <sighs> After Tom says it, we cut to black and white, super slow motion, cutting back and forth as an Italian opera plays. <laughs> <laughs> Are we, are, we, are we having like the the bandages thing? Because if we are, I'm probably gonna look like Mr. Libido for that. <laughs> I mean, I, I there there you know I, I'm just spitballing here. There might be better ideas. No, no, because you know what? Idea. You know what? We're gonna have Dan. He's gonna do narration as like the opera music plays and like Stephen is staring at his hand and he'd be like, one in every hundred people has ass hair installed on their brains. Like it's just something like this. Like please, like. Go get, get, no, no, yes, no. please, I'll do it. All yeah. right, perfect. We're ready. And it really. It's got to. It's got to be like one in three. It's. Gotta, <laughs> and it really the makes them an ass insane. hat. Yeah, there you go. We're, we're just writing this live right now. Good lord, uh, man. Trendsetters, please hey, do this a direct a relief great, to help. This, Will this, this help great them? Segue. No, but do it anyways. Is, I want to. Uh, getting, I want to tease something for uh, for the chat here to get them excited for the upcoming Coliseum. Did you see Tim's bumper? Did he show it on Twitter? Yet. Or are you asking no. us? I'm asking I'm asking you guys. I, saw it, I yeah. haven't seen it yet. It was good. I, I saw that it was posted, but I haven't seen it yet. I think Tim is the only person that's done one so far. Correct. <laughs> yes, that is yeah, correct. I have no not idea to, what to do for mine. Same. Not to out literally yet. Well, John, you just came up with a great I can, idea. I can, <laughs> honest to God, you tell me to write a bumper. I will 100% come up with one as long as I am not a part of it. If I'm not a part of it, <laughs> I can rattle out a thousand ideas. If That's I'm involved not, in any way, shape, or form, I'm like, oh, fuck, what do I do? Well, well not, John, uh, I mean, uh, uh, John, uh, 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 Steven has come down with a crippling case of arthritis in his, in his pet in hands. You're going to have to take his place in the ass hair uh, bumper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm still in Canada, though, so you're going to have the CG my hand in there. I have long referred to my right hand as the pet in hand. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you usually stroke uh, Kepler with? Uh, actually, actually, no. <laughs> I'm really, I'm very ambidextrous when it comes to um, 
Kepler. Do you, do you guys ever do things that where it's like probably should be done with your dominant hand, but you just use your offhand for whatever reason? I yeah, don't want to keep talking about this at all. <laughs> Sometimes the brain will just be like, uh, I, I hold sometimes a ambidextrous. fork with my offhand, Steven. Is that what you call it? <laughs> really? I'm sorry. I'm trying to imagine, for whatever reason, hold, wait, is it because you cut the steak with your right hand? Is that like you hold the knife in your hand? Is that what you mean? I guess maybe. I guess I could probably do it if I switch. But like, even when I'm not eating things that require a knife, I'll just use my left hand to like hold a fork or a spoon. Really? Yeah. Huh. That that's interesting. Okay, so like I've switched cuz I if I'm cutting something with a fork and a knife, I cannot cut using my left hand. Like my my right hand has to be the one holding the the knife cuz I'm right-handed. And then I'll eat with the fork in my left hand if I'm holding both utensils. Yeah. But generally. Got, <laughs> you got to use this I use the knife with my primary hand for sure. This this reminds me of something uh one of my exes uh criticized me about. We were we were at like some place. I think we we're at like her parents' house, like eating food, and she was watching the way I was holding like a fork and knife. And she's like, "Why are you doing that that specific way?" I was like holding like the fork in my in my off hand, my left hand, like straight up, and I was using the knife in the right or something. It actually might have been the opposite. Like I was holding the fork and the my off hand was using the knife, and she's like, "What is this insane? Like like I'm cutting the steak and it's like flying everywhere on the plate." She's like, "Why are you doing it like that?" I don't know. This is just the way I've always had. She's like, why don't you literally just swatch, switch your hands around? And I did that, and then suddenly, like, nothing was moving. I'm like, I feel like an idiot now. <laughs> why, why, why is this way? <laughs> Wait, you were using... Hold I, on. I, I was using opposite this. hands for everything. So my, I'm right-handed, but I'm usually ambidextrous. So I held the fork in my right hand and my knife in the left. And then she's like, well, just swap the two around. So oh, the fork's okay, in my left okay. and the knife's in my right. And then suddenly it stopped being a problem. Okay, for a minute, I thought it was reversed, and I thought that I was like, oh my god, if I just switch it, but no, it's okay, it's the same thing. Yeah. Hmm. You know, I actually don't use a knife almost ever. The only time I'll ever use a knife, if it's for some, if it's same. For tough meat. Uh, do you use the side of the fork? You just wiggle it until you get through whatever you're trying to get through? Uh, usually, like, if it's soft enough that I can use a fork, I'll use a fork. Usually, otherwise, I'll use a steak knife. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, growing up, we didn't use knives. Like, the only time there was a knife at the dinner table was, like, a steak. Like, that was it. Like, for anything else, chicken, you can cut through a chicken with the side of a fork. You don't need a knife. Why do I feel like it was just one of those things where it's, like, there's just there were just never knives in your house to begin with because there was just, like, you you don't remember why. All you remember is, like, one day at the dinner table, you look over and you see your dad with an eye patch. Oh my god. <laughs> um I guess like uh I I'm usually going to be using my right hand for everything, but I am ambidextrous with a mouse because I use my mouse with my left hand while I'm drumming. So I kind of taught oh, myself to use that instead of having like that. Yeah, cuz like I I you know, I usually use my my right hand uh for like sitting at my desk right now, it's on my right. So, but, hmm? J Jared, is your mouse shaped like it does it have a curve on it, or is it perfectly flat? Uh, it has a curve on it. I've just gotten used to it. My, I'm gonna say, like, my, question, my, mine's definitely curved for a right hand. So I'm like, oh god, I can't imagine trying to do that with the left. It's got to feel awkward. No, my I'm, question, my hmm? question for you, Jared, is: Do you have your left mouse button set up in the normal configuration, or did you swap left and right? Uh, it is normal configuration. I'm able to go back and forth between left and right on pointer and middle on both hands for some Wild. reason. That is, yeah. that is crazy. It, that took me a little while to get used to while I was streaming, but... Uh, like, okay, time to click on this. Damn it, the menu popped open. Yeah, like I, like I just moved over with my, uh, with my left and I'm just, you know, using it like a normal mouse. It's very strange, like, that I can just do that. But yeah, I had to <laughs> I had to do something because it was very awkward having to switch where my freaking mouse was on stream all the time because I would use it on my my rightmost Tom, uh, not Tom Fox, but you know, and oh the drum right <laughs> yes the drum and uh, <laughs> using it on Tom's butt hair on the top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> but oh uh, Jared, watch where you're moving that mouse. <laughs> 
Oh, but uh, yeah, no, it's it's like it's one of my my favorite, I guess, little talents that I've I've taught myself, like being able to use the mouse with that way. I freak people out with it too. They're like, "How the freak?" <laughs> I guess I, that's just a really good example of like, with enough practice, you can you can do something that your body, you know, by default does not want to do. Exactly. There, um, there's a saying that uh, I don't know if I've ever read this before anywhere, but it popped in my head the other day. Um, it's like everything takes practice, so everything can be learned. So if like, if you're ever like, I get people who ask me, it's like, man, I, I want to play drums as good as you. Like, how the frick do I do it? I'm like, practice, you know, or like whatever it is, everything literally takes practice. So everything can be mastered. It just takes time <laughs> and effort. It just takes 10,000 hours. Yep. It's Easy. It, 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 like, you're never going to be like, you're never going to be good at everything, but you can at least like master the stuff that you can make. Yeah, and, and the things and the things that you want to, and the things that make bring you joy, you know. Yeah, uh, like. like... That... And he's gone oh. again. Uh oh. <laughs> no, no, I'm not gone. I was, I, I was thought you were going to continue on with something, and I was letting you go, and then nobody oh. said anything. So. Uh, <laughs> the awkward awkward he will be missed. He will be. Missed. <laughs> he, I will be missed. Yeah, but no, um, everyone. like that, that's the same way with like any any art or skill. Just it's just it's repetition. Like you know. You you repeat and you repeat and you repeat and you, and you learn and like and eventually like you'll you'll develop your like like a, a, for like more traditional art you'll develop your, your own style and then it's like well maybe I want to learn uh like better anatomy and then that's the kind of thing you have to study and then once you understand how it works then it's more repetition 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 until you until you like you know get it down pat or it melds into your own style well and the cool thing about that is every single like for for art I God. Art is hard. I don't see how y'all freaking draw as well as y'all do because man, it's hard. Uh, but l the coolest thing is, is every single time I draw anything, I pick it up, right? It's a part, uh, it is now a part of, of my repertoire. I have a better understanding of how to do that thing. And that is, you can uh, apply it with literally anything that you do, whether you are learning to, how to draw, how to play guitar, how to play drums. Like you learn a chord. Guess what? That's a chord you didn't know before. Open heart surgery. <laughs> that's a, that's a heart. That's not going to close again, but you know, <laughs> like, hmm? you, you gave yeah, it your that, best try. That uh, used to be a ventricle. <laughs> but not like, and um, that's been a very encouraging thing to me because like, I used to always be like, man, I can't freaking draw like frick that. You know, I, I'll stick to drumming. It's what I'm good at. Right. And then I realized, oh, wait, I've been playing drums for 13 years. Of course, I'm decent at it. Right. I've been drawing for all of a year now. I think it'll be a year. Exactly. Uh, I have to double check, but it's like I haven't really been working on it that much. So it just takes time, you know, and and uh, what I would like to call um, focused effort, like uh, taking time for, you know, actually studying, but then also taking time to just have fun. It's supposed to be like, I don't know, like, uh, 80, 20, right? 80, 80% 80 should be the fun part. 20% should be the really, really freaking hard stuff that you're trying to like beat into your head, you know? <clears throat> Cause that's what keeps you motivated, I guess. I, I always want to instill in folks anytime they're talking about wanting to do something whether that's drawing or a creative endeavor or any sort of skill um that you know it's never too late there's so many folks that get caught up on the fact that oh i didn't get started playing piano when i was seven and now i can't do it and it's like well, that's not how that works mm -hmm. nope you can get started and it, it's okay um and the hmm. thing is you'll see improvement you just have to keep at it so never let how much time you haven't spent on something be the determining factor for whether you do it or not. There's a, that, uh, should, that should not stop you. There's a book I've been reading called um, uh, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. And it is really, really cool because it, it tells you like, hey, whenever you were a kid, you really enjoyed drawing. Like you'll remember the house you drew with the, with, you know, the the sidewalk that comes towards the the front and then the sun and the sky and the tree on the right side and on the left and whatever you have a fence you know it's like that you enjoyed doing that but as you grew older and you weren't practicing your art it didn't look realistic to you as you grew and you became more refined right like your mind became more refined while your 
ability to do so because you haven't been practicing stayed the same. So it's just, it's really cool to show that you can learn anything. And it just, once again, as I said, it just takes focused effort. And it's, it's just, it was really mind blowing. There's the, the chapter that talks about like how you progressed, but your art didn't because of the fact that you weren't really focusing on it. And the world became more uh, complex. The world became a lot more complex as you grew older because back in the day, I mean, you were like, oh, this is cool. This is a this is a ball. I like this. This is cool. I like this. You know, whenever you're three and four, and you're that's it. But now you're like, oh, I really want, you know, I would like to have a new iPhone and I would like to work on doing stuff on Twitch and on YouTube and stuff. And it, it just, you know, as things got more complex to you, your art stayed the same because you weren't practicing it, if that makes sense. And that's why people who've been drawing since they were kids and kept with it are some of the craziest freaking artists like ever. Uh, and it's because of that conscious effort. Hmm. But yeah, dude, like I recommend, even if you're not wanting to learn how to draw, freaking pick up Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. My God, it is a darn good book. Really, really good. You know what you need to have, Jared, is one of those like uh, like uh, Amazon referral pages, just like all the books that you're reading at the time, like the, uh, the, <laughs> the, the Lucid Dreaming one and the Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain one. Dude, I actually do need to do that because I have uh, whenever Amazon Blacksmith was was a thing um, on Twitch, like I had like the list of stuff that I would use for the stream. And truthfully, I just need to add that into my gear list now because like I have like the Amazon uh, list. I should do that. That's a good idea. I don't know. I think this is probably in response to saying that I eat with my off hand off hand. But Dan put in the chat, is that so it feels like a stranger is feeding you? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So Bravo, much. Dan. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. Yep. Uh, yep. The stranger, but with eating. <laughs> the stranger. Yep. God, that's a term I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> Good Lord. Thank you, Dan. We should uh. we should probably talk a little bit about um, the fact that there is a uh, event. Yeah, I like I like how we didn't even take the natural transition we had earlier and just ignored it. Yeah, <laughs> yep, we were we were getting there. We were almost there, and then we we took a hard left. It's fine. It happens. It's fine. On this show, get out. No. <laughs> so yeah, for those who don't know or not aware, the Runaway Guys Coliseum is later this month. If you're listening to this live, we're pretty close to posting time. February 26th, 27th, and 28th, 2022 is when Coliseum is happening this year. That is Saturday, Sunday, and Monday for those who thought it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like a number of us in our group thought. Uh, so yeah. Keep that in mind. We haven't got the schedule finalized yet, but we can confirm a couple of events that we have on there, like Chaos Fortune Cookie, a.k.a. the origin of the Disc Only Podcast is on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that's going to be day one, actually, on Saturday. Oh, nice. That's actually perfect. Yeah, I think we were trying to plan it out so that no matter what, it landed during my usual Fortune Cookie stream time. So, yeah, I believe that's landing on Saturday. Cool. That makes a lot of sense. I can't I am also, believe that this thing is in two weeks. Dear yeah. God. Yeah. I know, someone, someone in chat right. earlier was like, wow, you guys sound very prepared. I'm like, no, this is how it always is. This is really how it always is. <laughs> Dude, I, I've, been, I've been so much more like going with the flow this year. Just like, hey, uh, I don't really have too many things planned for this one. Because la last year I was freaking gung-ho because both me and Erica were going to be like doing a lot of different stuff. But now I'm just like, I'm going to guest on other people's ideas. You know, <laughs> it's just a bit easier in that in that uh, form of doing things. I, yeah. I take the same approach that I do every year. I want to host stuff and be involved. But well, actually, no, I'm taking a different approach this year because I don't want to be involved in everything like I have in the, the other two in-person events because that destroyed my voice. Yeah, I was going to say, you got you got it bad because you, Steven, I don't know if you've confirmed, but I know Tom at least is going to be at the main house. So the way we're doing it is we're in like five or six different groups, basically, and uh, a number of people are going to be at the main house still. Not the entire roster, um, but I think almost half at this point. The number went up the other day from what I saw. It was originally it was only going to be like six or seven people. Mm. 
And I don't know if like, Stephen, you and Mal confirmed. I think Dan confirmed he was going, or was he also a question mark? I forget. Yeah, we should we should all we should all be there. I'm I'm particularly looking forward to after several years of not being able to do it, um, shoot some bumpers in person again. Yeah, because I enjoyed that so much, and now I can do it again. I'm I still want everyone to make one on their own. <laughs> That is still important. I, I so, have so, one so like I, drafted up. I just don't know how to to end it. I can't think of a punchline. To to clarify, like part like this parts of the Runaway Guys Coliseum are gonna be like in person and a bunch of uh bunch of other ones are gonna be online. For example, like John and John and Reese are in are in, in Canada and what with travel being the way it is right now. Can't didn't, really come stateside. Yeah, didn't want to risk yeah. it. There will be some people in person sometimes. That's the that's the gist. Yep. When, when you tune in, you don't know who's going to be in front of you and who they're going to be with. Unless you read the schedule, in which case you'll probably know pretty handedly on that. Don't <laughs> read the schedule. <laughs> Go in with yeah, 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 Don't read the schedule. Just watch the whole thing. Let it be watch a surprise. Take the weekend off. We do, got, we do have a... Uh, yep. I mean, like, you know... Really sucks that like that we can't all be in person, but like the online the online format allows us to do things that we couldn't do in person, like Chaos Fortune Cookie. Yeah, so there is benefit yeah. for me not being there. Uh, I've had a couple of people asking in chat, will Rosa show up? No, there's no plans for Rosa this year. It's not going to have as big of an impact. Uh, and the main reason she showed up last year was because it was a charity incentive for a Breast Cancer Research Foundation. So uh, yeah, there's no current plans for it. She might pop up in a bumper at most. But otherwise, it's yeah. me running all my segments. And I've got two big segments this year instead of being on, like, seven or eight smaller ones and Chaos Cookie. For, it's, for it's, some reason, like, you, you know, we're just talking about Rosa, and then you and then you very much accentuate your two big segments. It Look, man, it's a habit at this point. Know, it's literally it just, just, it's it just a reflex. So well. I it's had just a fucking it reflex. It's fine. It's fine. It's I had to point me. it out, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, man. I'm just, I'm excited. I'm very excited, man. It's, it's gonna... <laughs> I, I noticed the edit in the Discord for the talking points, and Dan added two big segments in there. God <laughs> damn just it. Just popped it in. Uh, but yeah, man, it's, it's going to be really good just chilling with y'all again, um, oh, even, if yes. it's, even if it's not in person, you know? Still Next. get back to that that uh, that 2018 year where we were it was a little bit less organized. We were in that that house that wasn't really quite prepared for what we were doing, and just like you know, we had to be up fairly early in the morning. But I just remember like like it was like me and like Jepson, Stephen and Mal and Tyler, just like and like yeah, th th like a few other people down there as well. But just like all just sitting on the on the like the couch in that main room after everything was said and done, and just talking. Like I had, I had. This, like I met you at like PAX that same year, Steven, but like we never really talked up until that point. No, no. The the Coliseum events have been honestly a really great chance to get to know folks. And I, I've mentioned this before, how when people watch Coliseum events, it makes it seem as if we've all been best friends for 20 years. And that's like not even remotely close to no. the truth. Yeah, I like, um, I've been kind of like in that like, just like going with this, like I've kind of been in that same creative space as Steven, but didn't actually meet him until Coliseum 2018. I didn't meet Jared until 2019, and I called him the wrong name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 2019, um, Coliseum was the first time I had met almost all of y'all in person. Yeah. Um, other than yeah. like maybe running by y'all at a convention or something like that. That was basically it. And then uh, me and John were on a team. Uh, for I think it was Mario, Mario Party, Party 2 7. and then or, oh yeah Mario Party 7 and after that the rest is history man we were just freaking yeah. we were just like man <laughs> we, we gotta hang out well. more that was fun <laughs> yeah that was awesome oh god someone in chat reminded me I think maybe not the highlight but a highlight of that trip was the uh, after all was said and done we all went to Waffle House at 2 in the morning <laughs> oh god and I fell asleep at my table <laughs> oh, man <laughs> Uh, I, I had uh, to leave. I had to leave early. I, uh, after the three days of event, I freaking drove back to, uh, to Beaufort and like 
it was oh man dude i was so tired <laughs> i should not have driven back that night no but that was a brave decision man yeah like i'm i'm good on the roads uh like i can i can drive for freaking ever but i tell you what though i did like i did have my hand out the window because it was freaking cold like i had my hand out the window i was like oh yeah give me the shock i need it yeah give it to me wake me up please please yeah I remember no, that was, I'm, I'll, I'll admit, I've actually been kind of glad not to have been going in person because at least then I haven't had to like panic, put things together for segments because what was it? 2019, I had, I was in LA for an event, flew a, a day late from LA to get there. I ended up getting it at the same time that Carlos and Sab did. And because I was at the event, I, half my segments were not ready. So I remember numerous nights being up till 9 a.m., getting my segments ready, going to sleep, and then having to get up for a noon or 1 p.m. Uh, segment. Like, literally, mm. Tyler, one night, Tyler just wandered into my room because everyone else was asleep. So he was just chatting with me while I was working on a segment. He fell asleep on my floor and then realized he was <laughs> getting tired. He's like, yeah, I should probably go and, like, sleep in on the couch. I'm like, you have a room. Go sleep in your room. I'm like, no, I don't want to wake up people in my room. I'm going to go sleep on the couch. I, I was I was rooming with Tyler <laughs> at oh, that yeah. point. I wonder why he never used the room the entire trip. Yeah, he didn't, he wanna, he didn't want to wake you up. I, Ty, Tyler, uh, Tyler had it rough that uh, that coliseum just because of like his sleep schedule was all off but he had also been doing so much beforehand because i think like uh, like maybe like a couple weeks before that was um uh versus expo and then he had just been traveling since then yeah he hadn't been home yeah. for like a month or something crazy yeah that was nutty yeah in 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 ret in like in comparison this event feels almost calm <laughs> mm. it <laughs> won't be but it feels like it two weeks before. I will like change my tune in two weeks. It'll, it'll definitely. I feel like it'll definitely feel a, le a lot less hectic with uh, with um, less people in person. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and I think and I think we'll like depending on on how things go. I feel like people are going to have more breaks if that makes sense because. The entire event isn't happening at once. Some uh, segments are exclusive to like specific locations, so like yeah. you know, so like there's going to be times where everybody at a location is going to have downtime. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, like I'm looking at, I'm skimming the schedule here right now. Like, uh, I think we're broken up into five groups. It might be four. Yeah, Jared, you're at your house, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, the musicians are all in one place and a couple people are joining them. Uh, you all, are, a bunch of you are going to be in the actual main place we were going to be originally. And then I think Josh and Brooke are also at their place. So like there's like five, five groups and just like glancing at things, it jumps around a bunch. Like the first version of the schedule I'm seeing right here is uh, musician house, uh, various houses, very, uh, I think in person, uh, musician house, musician house, everyone uh local house everyone musician house like it just jumps around like there's definitely gonna be like big chunks of like each house being like okay cool i can rest for a bit yeah, yeah it's like oh well, like we've got two hours while these other while while like two segments are happening at another place let's head over to waffle house <laughs> it's always waffle house man Am I going to have gonna, Killcoms gonna for gonna Chaos be, Cookie? Be yeah, the plan is to have these these four on. Yep. As long as we can figure out a way so that the people at the normal house can hear us. Because Jared Someone will be fine. And... Yep, just going to be on my regular PC. So <laughs> it works out perfect. Someone in the uh, the chat reminded me of something. I mean, it was just from, from standard conversation. It wasn't like really like connected to it. But like I saw D&D &D and I saw uh, Waffle House. And that brought this up. I was in a campaign where the entire group was paladins and clerics and uh the entire time while we the whole premise of us that like we were trying to rebuild a town and take down like a uh, like a corrupted dragon and uh the entire time we were like well when we build the church it has to be the lawful house <laughs> <laughs> oh lord man I was also reminded of something else. The, the uh, there was there was kind of like a, a head to our party because it was a character that was uh, that was in in like previous campaigns, um, 
there was one point where he was like in a white void and we, we were just like making comments about it saying like, oh, and suddenly, uh, the guy's name is Braun. Braun finds himself in a white void and the guy who's playing Braun goes, help me. <laughs> like he's just all alone. Oh God, and that kills me. Help me! Just, with the echo in the background. Help! Help! Yeah, help. just, 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 just in a white void, nobody else around, and just somebody going, and just the guy going, "Help me!" <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh man. Well, I am. I'm looking forward to. I say to doing the event as if there's not already things being worked on now, but um, you know, start starting to slowly apply the gas and then push the pedal to the floor in about two weeks from now. Yeah, because then we have deadlines for production things this week. Yeah, uh, three days. Ah, <laughs> guess what? You're getting late for me. Three days. Guess Please. what? You're getting late for me, John. John. I haven't slept in two days, Steven. You're going to have to fucking wait. you <laughs> five minutes. I swear to God, if I have to hunt down half of this group, I am going to stab you everybody in the are. throat with a pen. Let's be real. It's happened every year. <laughs> it shouldn't happen. It takes five minutes, and people have had several weeks to know about it. John, you should do one uh, where you're just, like, sleeping. I mean, I think that would be fantastic. We, we did that last year. That's literally one of them. Last year was me sleeping on the couch. Oh no, no. I mean, I mean from the uh, from the thing of you know what I'm talking about. Well, yeah, no. So for last, that's what I'm saying. Last year's intro. This is intro video work. We'll we'll not say what the theme is, but it's intro video. Yeah. Work. Like last year, okay. like I fell asleep on the couch for one of the intro bits and it was used. I think because Bagel <laughs> was staring at me the whole time. But like, <laughs> yeah, like that running. <laughs> but yeah, like. I haven't slept properly for two days because our neighbor's getting construction work done and uh, they they were ringing the doorbell for a couple days because they needed to use our backyard for the construction work because our houses are so close together. They needed to put a ladder in our yard to access work on their house. So, yeah. and since I'm in, uh, like a night owl, I'm basically on the mid shift to late shift. Like I got like no good sleep the past two days. So I've just been like a zombie at this point. They they were removing trees. Um, my neighbors were removing a couple trees, and God, that I was just I was so glad when that was over because it was just like all morning long. It's like who cuts down a tree at six o'clock in the morning? Like who does that? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> help me, <laughs> help me. I want to say something just uh, on like a personal note about like the podcast in general, and just something I kind of realized from just. Uh, because, you know, Dan's saying, should we wrap? And I'm looking over at my time here. It does not feel like an hour and a half has gone by. And I have, and I enjoy, like, every minute of doing this podcast with you guys. Dude, yeah. It really doesn't uh, feel like it's as long as it is, for sure. Not at all. <laughs> well, I'm just looking forward to giving some of you, and by some of you, I mean one of you, one of you a hug in person. <laughs> in soon the rest theoretical and, space hugs and, and i'll tell you i got my pet in hand ready <laughs> and don't make me actually yes. force you guys to make that a bumper <laughs> i will i will email dan and be like yo here's where you can get like the best wigs find an ass for Tom, <laughs> and then the, write the bumper yourself if you gotta <laughs> Dear that's God. gonna be good I have, best part I, I have an idea for a bumper but the, i have two problems with it one that it uh one it has to be filmed part of it has to be filmed on location at the event and the second i think i should wait until we're off uh off the stream before i mention it dude like the best part of y'all doing a bumper that we're talking about here is that everybody who is listening live is going to get such a kick out of it right cuz you know the other people are going to be like what the frick is this it's it you know, there's there's going to be lots of great stuff. I'm excited for all of it. It'll, uh, so much of it will be a nice surprise for folks that tune into the event. I mean, you all, you guys also better be prepared for how much you're going to be using spray bottles again, if I had to guess. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the people in person. I don't have to worry about that. I'm yeah, by exactly. It's going to be great. Steven, I've got so many other birds I can yell at you while spraying you in the face. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> he's been He's been getting them ready all year. God, I, I, I've got two, I've got, yeah, I've got two uh, years of birds build up. 
<laughs> oh, no. oh no someone put a perfect a perfect follow-up bumper in chat if they do the butt hair bumper i hope they do a follow-up bumper where tom's walking out of the bathroom with toilet paper trailing from the back of his head or similar <laughs> Dude, thank yeah. you ryu saber thank you ryu saber incredible <laughs> <laughs> all right let's wrap all this up shall we uh what's everyone got going on other than coliseum obviously this month start with tom uh i've been playing a buttload of terraria the calamity mod with uh bread ultimus and uh and uh sci-fi that's been a lot of fun i couldn't get into terraria when i first played this has been really enjoyable and i don't know what changed um other than that uh not really much else going on aside from the usual stuff. I got Super Mario 3D World coming out with a different guest in every episode. I still need to talk to Steve and Dan and, and Jared about that. Um, but I was in it. Yep, John was in it. Uh, the last episode I think was with uh, with Jules, and we had some pretty good banter, including a few D's nuts jokes. Um, and then I'm still doing the Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion, uh, edited by our producer here, Dan. Uh, and uh, we are, let's see, I think 86 just went up, and I've got up to, like, 94 recorded? Maybe further than that? And I'm hoping to get the rest of what I'm trying to accomplish done before episode 100, because uh, it may not be special in the, in, overall, but it's it's a it's a, uh, uh, a milestone, to say the least. In terms of, like, upcoming streams and schedules, I'm sure there's something, and I'm just completely forgetting about it. Oh, and later this month, I'm going to a place called TRG Coliseum. Is that summer camp? Yeah. <laughs> in winter. Yo, uh, winter camp. Hit me up about that, though. I would love to be a part of um, of that video. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Things that are happening. So the big thing happening for us right now is we're doing... I mentioned it earlier in the in the program. We're doing Pokemon Let's Go. And it's it's Mal and I playing different versions of the game. So like I'm playing Pikachu, Mouse playing Eevee. We're playing through the game at the same time. Um, the audience are naming the Pokemon and also coming up with quirks for them. And the quirks are artist prompts. So like different Pokemon get different weird things attached to them, and then the artist drawing them. So it's it's created hundreds of pieces of just let's call it unique Pokemon art. Like Ekans graduates college, <laughs> which has it? been like, so, there's been so many good pieces of Ekans graduating college. Um, I forgot what your starters had because because I, I think it was what was it like Mal's was obsessed with coffee or something or no was that Bel no, uh, Bell Sprout that was obsessed with coffee? Yeah, uh, Bulbasaur was obsessed with coffee, and there was another one that was obsessed with coffee. Our starters actually didn't get quirks. We're just oh. kind of letting them do their own thing. They have their own. <laughs> Uh, like for instance, Beatrice is a killer because uh, I get murdered, and that's another part of the uh, the adventure is that after every gym, Mal and I fight each other, and uh, that's 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 been interesting. We're still working on balancing that out. <laughs> the, uh, I think the double team spam was a uh, kind of put some people over the edge. Maybe a little bit, but also in the first fight, I tried to do that and I lost really bad. So you know, we'll we'll see. But um, that's happening every Friday. Uh, from here until forever, uh, at whatever time we do that. Is it 8 p.m. Eastern? That sounds right. Oh, and uh, I think Dan will, will, will stab me if I don't tell you that this happened. Um, we did a recording of uh, Broken Phone, which is a, a series we do over on the YouTube channel. And uh, we did it with John. John joined us for the first time ever on a Stephen and Friends video, and it was great. We invented... Um, some new fun characters. Yeah, everyone's favorite Pokemon, Raifieri. <laughs> it's 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 worth it's worth catching. It's worth catching. I gotta jump in those again because, like, man, Western Yu-Gi-Oh was run to well, it was fun to write. <laughs> Broke Broken Phone is is amongst my favorite content on the channel to make. It's very very it's very it's a very fun creative endeavor. It's a good time. <laughs> Uh, for me, normal streams, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at 4.30 Eastern. Um, drums and random silliness. Uh, but other than that, just Coliseum, truthfully. It's just the normal schedule for me. 
Dan, what about you? Um, Twitch.tv slash uh, Motion Dan. Um, tomorrow night, actually, we're going to be doing the, the Mario stream. Oh, so. yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, anything else you want to bring up? Otherwise, I'll just start digging into my schedule and talk about that. Um, nope. I think that's it. Okay. All right, so for my crew, a couple things going on. Like Dan mentioned, tomorrow I will be playing Mario Party Superstars with Motion Dan. Uh, and unless things change last minute, also attacking Toucans and Josh Jepson. So we're going to be starting, I think, 6 Mountain Time, 8 Eastern, I think is what we were looking at for start time. We'll probably play a game or two there. Uh, and then uh, we'll wing it from there after that once they decide if they need to bounce or not. Uh, otherwise, I'm on regular schedule for this week. Saturday is Fortune Cookie, Wednesday is Wild Card Days, just whatever we're doing, and Mondays is Game Clearing. Game Clearing's theme this month is Love for Subs, so I've been playing game choices from some of my longest-running subs and a bunch of my founders. So uh, a bunch of my founders and longtime subs hit 100 months in January for being wow. subbed to the channel. So uh, I've been picking through their game choices, and currently we're doing Zone of the Enders, the second runner. We're doing the uh, PS4 remake. But also, subs, if you are subs of this channel, check our Discord in about an hour. It might be a little bit sooner, uh, but it'll be a little bit after the podcast no matter what. We're going to start doing predictions for March's game clearing because March's game clearing theme, as I mentioned on stream last night, is March Madness. So we are actually doing a 32-game tournament. And whatever game wins the tournament is the game we end up playing for game clearing in March. And then we play second place and so on, depending on how much time is left in the actual month. So Yo, let's go. I've got Duke heading to the finals. There you go. And whatever, and whoever gets, uh, we're doing predictions as well. So whoever gets the most accurate prediction, whatever game they want to get played on stream will be played for April. Uh, otherwise, yeah, that's my schedule. Let's, uh, let's talk about what our topics were. Hang on, I'm still laughing at this wig that Dan sent me to these ones because for Tom. I would oh show God, it on stream, but it. it's going to show my P.O. box if I, or my postal code if I do, so i got to be careful. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right. Uh, talking points. Not. Oops, sorry. I was just going to say I could not pull off curls like that. I mean, if you try hard enough. Mm. Talking points for this episode of Disc Only. Super Love Bowl. Hey, Dogpile. Miss the boop. How does the android chew? Walrus infestation. Sacred bee text. John, I want Halo Jesus. Pika president. Poka puberty. Everybody getting old. My petting hand. Pet me, Dad. You can do learning. And two big segments. The largest. The largest of segments and always getting larger. Ah, a special thank you to Popsky for our theme song, Prism Shard for our logo, Paper Pennies for the beautiful art in our intro, and our producer is Motion Dan. The next episode is actually going to be a bit. So here's the thing. We're basically expecting Disc Only to be one of the Chaos Fortune cookie choices. So we did not schedule it this year in the schedule. At least it is not currently in the schedule. We were thinking if we were going to have an actual scheduled segment for disc only, it would make the most sense for all of us to be in person because then it's a completely different dynamic and it would be worth exploring for the podcast and for the, uh, and for the charity stream. So there is no planned March episode of disc only because we're pretty sure this is going to happen in Chaos Fortune Cookie at some point. Which means the next episode, otherwise, if we're not counting Coliseum, is actually going to be in April. April 5th, more than likely, unless something changes last minute. So, so we will see everyone in March. Not March. At the, the end, end of, of month, February. Yeah, yeah, the end of February. End, unless they don't vote for... Uh, yeah. Game Boy player. Game Boy, yeah, Game Boy player. <laughs> and then so there's really, egg all over our face. <laughs> so really, you're you're giving everyone a lot of power here because it's yeah. up to them whether there's a disc only again. I mean, here's the thing though, like we we I want to set a record this year in just Chaos Fortune Cookie. I know it won't happen, 
but I want it to happen. So I'm like, <laughs> man, we should just let chaos just pure run and just see what happens. That That's my hope. I don't know if it'll actually work like that, but that's my hope. Wow. Last, well, I can't yeah. wait to do a six hour disc only stream. I mean, it could, hap- <laughs> it could happen entirely. Last year, uh, chaos cookie alone raised $72,000. So in my heart of hearts, I want to raise $100,000 in just Chaos Cookie. But I know that that's probably not possible because it's in a weird time of year. Uh, It's the first day this time around. Like, there's a bunch of things against it. But in my heart of hearts, I want it to happen. I just can't think of a good incentive for if we ever hit $100,000 in just that three-hour segment. Dude, let me tell you, it is hard to keep track of all the donations that come through that, man. It's just, it's so nutty. Yeah. And we appreciate y'all very much, like, given, because it's it's just, it's crazy. (laughs) I'm guessing you don't want to put stickers out behind that. No, I feel like we've already done, so here's the thing. This is why I didn't offer Rosa John cosplay as an incentive. I didn't offer, well, Sticker Star is going to be an incentive, but I didn't want it to be, like, the 100,000 one, because we already do that. The only one I've had pitched to me that I liked and thought may be worth it was that I had to stream Xenoblade Chronicles 1 or 2 with a meal if we hit 100,000. But I don't know if that's worth it to people. So I think I'm going to keep shopping that one around. But we'll see. Hi, buddy. And I have a cat crying at me, so I should probably wrap up anyways. Catch you guys on our stream tomorrow with Dan and some others as well. But otherwise, we'll see you for disc only, possibly at Coliseum. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. So they can't hear us, John? They can hear us. Oh. Do you want them to not hear us? I'm gonna take that as a yes. <laughs> I can hear you, they might be giants. I can what a, what hear a way to you. end the podcast. Just barely hear you. Night, everybody. <laughs>